Hello and welcome to another live stream and uh, my name is Bhavin and I am a UX and UI designer for all those who are new. I've been doing uh, live streams since quite some long time now. Uh, it's been three years I have this YouTube channel. I usually post more about UX and UI and how to become a UX and UI designer in the near future. So this particular live stream is going to be about what a UX or UI designer actually does in his day to day career and what they actually do like from morning to evening right so what their whole daily schedule is what their actual role is and how things can be different from a graphic designer and with respect to ux and ui designer right so today we're going to talk more about all of that aspects and all the roles that a ux and ui designer actually plays so let's jump right into first one which is understanding user problems, right? So UX and UI designers understand and make sure that the problem statement is communicated very nicely to the to them. So if the problem statement is not communicated properly, it will be a really difficult endeavor to kind of bring the output. So that's the first important thing for a UX and UI designer to understand users problems, get into users head and understand the problems that these people are facing today, right? So the next, second thing that is really important uh, as a role for a UX and UI designer is that you have to get to know user's mentality and get into user's head and try to understand what's going on in their mind while they're actually interacting with your product, right? So you have to observe and learn their behavior specifically with respect to the product that you're working on. Get into their head, try and understand what are their frustrations, what are their motivation, and what is basically uh, the, the, the pointers. You have to just list it down and see if it actually connects with your product or not. So the second important thing the UX and UI designer plays a role is that you have to get to know users' mentality in deep, right? Very interesting topic. The third important topic that I'm going to talk about and what a UX UI designer does is present primary solutions to the stakeholders internally. Now, this is very instinctive designing philosophy where a UX and UI designer can, you know, directly jump onto pen and paper wireframe, right? So this really helps to jump into the solution once we have some sort of data and pen down as many solutions as possible so as i've clearly mentioned here need to be instinctive enough to present the easiest possible solution based on the first hand research and data right so that's really interesting and that's really important for a designer to present this thing right so the next important step that i'm going to talk about is jumping directly to a pen paper wireframe right that's a fourth important step and uh, this particular step is Purely, purely, when I say pen, paper, wireframe, it's purely a pen, paper, wireframe, right? So all you have to do is just like pen down all your solution as much as possible and see what all can be connected to what all screens and present the solution to your stakeholders and your product managers and your developers and see if it actually makes sense to build this thing into design, right? So that's the, th that's the fourth important step and the fourth important uh, routine that that users you know, designers follow today right so the, to, this is basically used to validate and check if you have managed to solve the problems via a simple pen and paper if not then it's better that rather than getting into designing directly into ui you do all those changes directly on pen paper wireframe right so that's the fourth thing that every ux and ui designer actually do right the fifth important thing that they do is the, the test the low fidelity wireframes now once you have all your pen paper wireframes locked a thumbs up is given by the stakeholders and the product managers you go and make low fidelity wireframes which is pure black and white and gray boxes and simply 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 connect all the screens on figma or if it is on sketch the tool it's up to you whichever you use so the second so the next important step which is to you know uh, uh, for the designers to validate these low fidelity wireframes and test it with the users, right? To see if the solution presented is working or not. I really think this is a really interesting step that every UX and UI designers actually do. 
uh, it it kind of gives them an idea and they can brainstorm even more with this low fidelity wireframe and see if the solution presented is working out or not right um for all those who have joined in follow me on instagram uh subscribe and hit that thumbs up button so that uh I can keep making more videos like this and I'm going to keep making more live streams like this. Uh, also, also do comment or do chat with me if you have any specific queries in between. I would love to answer them at the end of the video as well. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to make sure that I kind of impart as much knowledge that I have when it comes to, you know, UX and UI design. So that's that's my main objective of this live stream. And that's that's the main objective of uh, doing this live streams time and again. Right. So let's jump right to the next important thing that a user experience designer and a user interface designer actually does. Now, once you have your uh, low fidelity wireframes tested, your low fidelity wireframes, you know, locked by the product managers and stakeholders, it's very important next step to get into is interface designing and visual designing, right? This is really interesting for a UI design. So initial steps that I mentioned was purely with the form of UX design, right? Now the role starts of a UI designer, right? So now what a UI designer comes into picture now where they design interface and visual design. So they can add colors, the styles, fonts, gradients, illustrations, images, etc., to suit the need and suit the solution that they're providing, right? Now, this can be also done in phases. This can also be a part of individual uh, options given to different sort of users just to test and see which color or which font or which style is suitable for that particular solution. It's better to validate and test right so again this is also another role that user experience designer and other designers you know play while they're working on a product another thing that they do is presenting the interface to stakeholders product managers and user now your ui design is actually locked it's better to see uh, and validate these designs with stakeholders, product managers, and also your users, right? You need to see if the UI design that you created is actually making sense. If it is actually in alignment of the business goal that stakeholders have actually set, right? If it's not in alignment of what you're trying to do, you go back and actually reset everything, reshuffle everything and, you know, build it again. So it's better, it's better that you present these interfaces before you do the developer handover to to uh, present it to the stakeholders, product managers, and to the users as well, right? Really interesting. So again, this really helps us to validate your designs. It's, it's a must or else what will happen is that you yourself have created these designs and it will be a very biased opinion towards, you know, uh, building this, building this uh, uh, design, right? Very interesting thing. Finally, finally, uh, you have the next important step that is you know design handoff to the developers so once all of this all of all of these steps that you saw or all of the roles that a ux ui designer plays this is also another important role which usually what i have seen is that they kind of miss out on and don't play much in, and don't much interact much with the developers it's really important that you interact with the developers and see and try to imbibe the knowledge or try to imbibe the idea that you want and pass it on to the developer saying that hey this is what we have visualized and this is what we have thought it's better it's better you understand it from us and this is what exactly what you have to build now, there can be cases where developers can come back to you with problem statements or saying that this can't be built in the first go. It cannot be, uh, you know, this particular thing might not work. So what you do is you go back, think about the whole next step, iterate a little bit, and then again, go back and see if the solution presented would be feasible for the developers to build in the product release cycle, right? So again, your developer handoff happens with a proper proper prd a product requirement document it's it's really amazing to see how product requirement document is structured so this product requirement document basically talks about specification of your designs specifications of buttons specification of your fonts and it also talks more about how uh 
page is going to interact with you and where the next step is going to be right so again all the designs that you have made will be sent to the developers for making it functional right so tools that you can use specifically for something like this is figma there is a inspect element where you can go back and see what the code base is for that particular uh, element that you have selected lot of people also use something called as zeppelin so again you can check out zeppelin.io where most of the designs are actually put on zeppelin and developers can actually uh, uh, download and export the elements from that particular tool now really interesting thing is that user uh, developers can actually comment and give you feedback as well directly on figma and directly on zeppelin so again it's it's really interesting to see how this kind of rolls out when you actually mix and match and sit with the developers and play around with it right so again it's another very important step that ux and ui designers follow next really interesting thing that they do is shipping the final output right now once everything is built and everything is ready designers and developers and product managers are ready to roll this out and test it out with the actual user that's gone out in the market all you have to do is ship the button and and it's it's there out in the market so again in this particular stage there 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 are certain process that you have to follow post the release you as a designer will always get a feedback either from the user or from the analytics right so here again a ux designer's role comes back into picture and even a ui designer's role comes back into picture where they go back understand introspect and kind of see if the solution that you had provided which went out as a release worked out amazingly or not or it was a failure so it was a thumbs up or a thumbs down right so again that's something that you have to see and test and see the analytics if users are actually bouncing off from this screen or not if users are actually not clicking on this button or if there is a bug in this particular thing right so it's very important to see that as well when you are actually shipping out the final output so again this is it's like that daily uh, routine kind of a thing and this is something that they have to follow now you have all the data in place now you know where the bugs are now you know this these are the issues and this this is the, this is the problem you learn out of it you infer the data and you go back and iterate again now the whole cycle kind of you know revolves again you go back and see what can be changed and it's it's like a never ending process right so it's it's like a loop it's like a cycle you go back iterate go back iterate learn go back iterate ship build learn go back iterate so yeah i think that's another important thing that you should you know do in the whole flow of the whole product design cycle as a ux and ui design so your role doesn't end over here right so you have to have to learn iterate and sit with the users and empathize with the users and see what their problem is right now this is another important step that usually a lot of product designers and ux ui designers kind of don't follow and which is presenting your learnings presenting your learnings to uh presenting your learnings to the stakeholders right so there has to be a proper communication channel there has to be a proper presentation that needs to be followed where you explain the problem and you explain what users are facing as an issue to the stakeholders stakeholders will kind of realize that hey this particular thing that users are actually facing is actually a bug and not a product problem if there's a second problem this can be a ui problem and it's not a development problem so we go back iterate and and we kind of present our learnings which will help the product managers and the stakeholders to strategize their next step their next release cycle so this will be really helpful for a designer like you and me to see what all mistakes you have been making in ux and ui design and learn and iterate so yeah i think uh, that's that's the whole idea of uh, what a product designer or a ux ui designer does and i think the last step is have as much as much as coffee as you want so and and you have to move on to the next release and keep making more improvements so i'm going to reiterate again and tell you the steps one by one so for all those who've joined again hit that thumbs up button just for the algorithm 
and subscribe if you haven't already so uh, i'm going to just reiterate this thing very quickly all those important things that a ux ui designer actually does so yeah the first one was understanding user problems right very important very 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 important get to know your users mentality what they're actually thinking who are your users and you have to empathize your users and actually see what their problem is and actually understand the human psychology and that's what ux and ui designers have to do on a daily basis next step very important again is to present primary solution like a simple instinctive solution has to be presented up front uh, to the stakeholders internally right and designers need to be instinctive enough to you know bring out and show easiest possible solution that they can jumping to pen paper wireframe i think this is pretty uh, straightforward you have to just sketch things out and see how many screens are needed for this particular solution design and test that low fidelity wireframes like basic boxes on figma and screens and you have to test this out and make it in a clickable low fidelity prototype and see it that if users are actually understanding what they're trying to build or not uh, validation again is very crucial very very crucial over here now comes the role of a ui designer the previous steps that you saw the first five steps that, that you saw was a role of a ux designer the next step that is again now is now the role of a ui designer comes into picture you add colors you add styles you add fonts gradients illustrations and whatnot and make like a landing page and connect all those pages eventually and see if this particular style works for the user and also present another option always make sure you present more options so that it's easy for the users to kind of pick and choose and see if it works fine or not right so a ui designer's role comes into picture again ui designer can actually present the interface to the stakeholders and see if he can actually validate and see if it's actually working or not because it's always i've always seen that if one person designs it's his own perspective so there's a little bit of biasness that comes onto that particular design so it's better to see and work along in a group where you can get feedback from other designers and mentors and product managers and see if it's actually working or not so yeah you have to present this thing to them and see if it's actually working or not lastly it's like next step is they also be a part of the developer handoff uh, it has to be very smooth developer handoff with a proper prd shipping the final product out in the market and seeing if it's functioning properly testing properly if 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 all your goals are met uh, user actually interacting with it or not you get to see and test all of this over here now if if these things have gone live uh, the next step that you can see is learn infer iterate again now the whole loop of this whole continues you understand and make you know user personas go back and test if actually things your user flow was right or not uh, you go back learn and test things out so it's better that you keep i continuing this loop it's a never ending process you you might come up with some different solution after doing some more references right so it's better you keep iterating now and then present your learnings again this is a very important step again this comes with practice so uh, every ux and ui designer i a kind of recommend and request you guys to actually present your learnings to your stakeholders so that they can understand and see if strategies can be built based on the design that you build right lastly yeah you can drink as much coffee as you want while you're actually designing so kind of you know caffeine you know what i'm talking about So yeah that's that's pretty much about what a UX and UI designer actually does I'm open for Q&A now So we got some 5 to 6 people you can hit that subscribe button uh hit that thumbs up or you can also comment you can ask me questions if you have Let's do the Q&A it's been 20 minutes and I've been blabbering more all about UX and UI design so yeah Ask me as many questions as you want. Hi, Anjali. Hi, hi. Nice to meet you. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Hi, Chirag. Thank you for tuning in. Hi, Saurabh. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, I hope I could add some sort of value to you. Uh, this, this, this is something uh, I've never like. You know, as a topic, I've never explored, but I wanted to do it like every now and then. Um, yeah, like this. This is. This is. This is going to be really interesting to see how I can interact with you guys and learn from more from you, and you guys can learn more from me as well. So yeah, hi Amrut, 
nice to meet you nice to nice to uh, nice to see you coming live thanks for thanks for tuning in thanks for joining so you guys have any questions let's dig deep into and ask me as many questions as you can for what the ux and ui designer actually does like i am here to answer all your questions over here come on anjali has a interesting question anjali kashab you're a designer i have one year experience but my package is very low i have upgraded myself can i get into a good known company or not absolutely you can get into a new company for sure you have just started your career all right you have just started your career it's just one year make sure whatever designs that you are presenting make sure the designs that you are actually building you make sure you are also building a small impactful case study in the background case studies is something that you know lot of designers today hesitate to create i myself hesitate to create case studies but yes it is very important for you to build a case study now to up your skill right anjali you to up your skill you have to build like a strong impactful case study and actually roll it out and send it along with your cv to other companies and see if it actually helps you out or not so it's always said that if you send your um, cv or your case study to approximately 10 to 20 startups out of which two to five startups will get back to you with at least first round of you know interview process so i suggest that you ask and make case studies as many as possible because in return you will learn a lot in return you will gather a lot of knowledge out of building that case study again i'm going to do another live stream about how do i make case studies i'll i'll probably push like step by step process as to what goes into making case study right so i'm going to do that hi satish hi thanks for tuning in uh quite some time i hope i've answered your question anjali and uh, you can always ask for a raise for sure if you completed a year like if if your designs are really beautiful and you are creating an impact in that company you can up your game by asking a raise or up you can ask for a position upgrade as well i hope i've answered your question anjali next questions let's do this all right so i'm going to stay here for next 5 minute so that we're going to wrap it up and keep it short 30 minute kind of a thing where it's not too huge live stream so i'm open you can ask as many questions as you want uh, for all those who are new you can hit that thumbs up button and uh, subscribe if you haven't already uh, amrut has a question let's do this anjali you are always welcome do ask as many questions as you can uh, amrut has a question how to start practice of ux and ui design and how to choose subject for building the design if that's that's what you are asking anjali shoot as many questions as you have i am open to answering them as much as i can amrut very important very important is that you start take a topic like there are certain there are certain websites which actually give you fake briefs like designing fake briefs there's a there's a pure website which gives you a fake brief how cool is that right so you go to that particular website and take that brief and start designing don't wait for someone to give you the topic let's say i'm giving you a topic right now go and uh, create a a website for a fintech industry go and create a website for a hospitality industry make a landing page for a hospitality industry make a make a clone of airbnb website right so there's a lot that you can do so don't hesitate to start like start from figma start from pen paper wireframe like do a lot of referencing from dribble behance and and there are a lot of other website websites which give you a lot of referencing and ideas right so just start 
like check out figma it's amazing tool i love figma personally and i recommend you also use figma and take up any any topic right so fintech as i said hospitality as i said airbnb as i said crypto today crypto market is booming like crazy so i suggest you take up any topic of crypto nfts whatever you can but just like start right um i hope i've answered your question amrut don't hesitate just like go for it and just like start like i would love you i i would love to see your designs right so uh, don't hesitate just just go for it right let's look at another uh, i'm going to push like a link over here you can join this discord server if you want like i'm i just randomly try to post random inspirations and live streams so you can just connect with me whenever you can and uh, go to this discord server link and just like join in i i i try to be as much active as i can right amit has another question how to prepare for ui interview strongly for big companies like infosys and tcs all right uh very important very important you have a case study as i said i i always boast about keep bring building case studies case studies help the interviewer see how well you are presenting your solution so take up a topic as i said take up fintech build a solution around a problem of a fintech let's say loans right so loans is a very interesting topic build a solution of how can a pers- person take a car loan or a or a or a you no know, house loan or a you know two two wheeler loan or something like that or a personal loan build a solution around that now this particular solution needs to be structured nicely in a case study build this case study put push it into your cv and send it across to tcs and infosys right i think it's it's really interesting that you know even uh, you know bigger companies like tcs and infosys are also hiring uh, ux and ui designers but i would say why do you want to work with tcs and infosys i suggest you look for more startups which are challenging enough and it kind of you know helps you in a creative process so go for startups as well i know tcs and infosys is super super conservative and super super safe enough to join because they were a lot of funding but i also suggest that you look for startups as well so yeah i think you can prepare for your interview uh by you know looking at lot of videos which are available on youtube today to make you prepare for those interview process there's a proper process of a different uh, a cycle of sorts there are a lot of steps involved in it right first step would be like you know understanding what you do second step let's say uh, you will be given a design task uh, you perform that design task at home and present that design task in the third round two other product managers and the fourth step would be final final round where you will be talking to the ceo and the hr and the final offer will be presented to you so it's 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 an iterative process i think it's different for different startups and different companies but yes it's very important that you have a good strong case study anjali has another question uh, how can we see the impact or do interviews or do testing in self passion project go to a coffee shop right if you have a solution go to a coffee shop be approachable talk to that particular person sitting right next to you saying that hey you working on a project i would love to buy a coffee for you just sit next to him try to present your uh, solution and see that this is the problem that you're trying to solve you might be surprised to see what solution these people are trying to give you right you will be really surprised to see um, like it will be completely different out of what you have designed so be approachable and you will be able to see the impact automatically if you talk to at least 5 to 10 users it can be your friends it can be your colleagues it can be your mentors or it can be other designers or it can be anyone so it's better that you validate send them prototype link of figma just tell them spend 5 minutes with me i would love to send you something as a return gift and that's how even companies also do today uh, i what what i what i've used to do is i used to call up certain users i used to tell them saying that hey join this i'm going to give you a uh, 1000 rupees amazon gift voucher if you spend 30 minutes with me i try to understand what's going on in their head 
and i keep asking them questions in the whole user testing process so that's that's how you can actually test and see how you can get impact in 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 your uh, projects as well i hope i've answered your question anjali again prince hi prince thanks for tuning in just a little fresh up coming from this uh, as soon as possible can't to wait prince i think you missed out the initial a uh, bit when i was putting down different pointers but you can check back later for sure uh, amrita has a question hi amrita thanks for joining in where do you go to refer for inspiration and learning in order to grow as a designer if you are a ux designer i would say uh, let me post this question hi amrita yeah so let me post this uh, uh like you know if it's a ux designer if you are a ui designer or a product designer right I would go to this blog called as Nielsen Norman Group. These people are really, really famous for UX design and understanding user psychology. I would go there for referencing and reading. I would go there to understand what users are actually building today and what are they expecting. You will get a lot of experience case studies over there as well, and you will get a lot of data over there. So I'm gonna. Uh, I'm gonna put down over here. It's it's something called Nielsen Norman Group, right? So um, check check it out, Amrita. Uh, I'm sure you will get a lot of uh, you know knowledge from that if you're if you're getting into UX design. Now, when it when I say about product UI design and visual design, the brilliant, brilliant, brilliant Dribble is there. Uh, Behance is there. Um, there are a lot of other websites like you know uh, UI Inspiration. there is collect ui daily ui up labs there's there's a lot that you can but yeah i think most most of the designers today go to dribble and behance kind of ape the visual content around it right so i think that's how you can grow again if you want to go grow uh, as a designer into a particular niche or into a particular field i suggest that you validate your designs and take feedback from your mentors and take you know Uh, do the user testing and see if it's actually working or not, and which will help you so that you don't make those mistakes the second time, right? So, do that. You will get a lot of ideas, right? I hope I've answered your question, Amrita. Prince has a question. Hello, sir. I'm leaving a question here. Please try to answer those points. I'm going to check this out within a few minutes. Uh, for the 2021 graduates, can you suggest a process for getting into a UX UI field? interesting question very interesting question uh for all the graduates all the newbies who want to get into ux and ui designing first learn tools first understand the fundamentals of ux and ui design don't directly jump to job or don't directly jump for an internship i suggest to spend some 2 3 months sitting at home and learn tools like go for certain boot camps and attend certain boot camps and you know try and mix and match and see how actually other designers are actually functioning and what what is the market doing currently and what's what's the requirement for a particular role right so i suggest you learn certain tools is what i can say right now uh, figma would be the best uh, uh, i would also suggest miro for uh, wireframing or prototyping i would also suggest uh, something called as zeppelin uh, if you also want to learn a little bit of coding i think there are certain boot camps also available for coding as well so you can learn something like html css javascript for initial phase it's okay if you don't want to learn but yeah i think for a starter like you who just graduated i suggest that you learn the tools and fundamentals of ux and ui design dig deep into it don't directly go for job don't directly go for an internship don't directly uh, you know say that hey i'm a professional this is the, just just like make like some strong base which will really help you so it's it's really important to build that base in the initial phase if you don't build that base and directly jump into it you will fall under the trap and you will realize like hey i still don't know a lot of things and you will end up you know uh, uh, your motivation will be really low to get into it right so yeah i think uh, for for new people i suggest learn the tools more question i do follow up nn group for ux insight they are surely the best yes amrita they are amazing uh, i also suggest you read certain medium articles right don't just save it for later 
read medium articles and try to imbibe it in your actual process right uh it's it's really interesting to uh read but and forget it because your brain kind of registered it for some time and you might forget it tomorrow so while you're actually doing it read over here on the screen and actually imbibe it in your product design is adobe good or not very interesting question uh, i'm not going to talk more about the tools over here every tool has its own limitations and every tool has its own pros and cons right so for me figma is one of the best tools ever i think it's much more better than adobe xd and sketch today xd has its own limitations sketch has its own limitation but figma is free with crazy plugins and crazy super, like smart animators also their auto layouts is there like it's it's so super fast to build something on figma right i'm going to do another you know uh, live stream also uh, where i teach a little bit about you know ui designing and my process of actually how i build a website so let's see if i can come up with another live stream of sorts uh, to you know jump into figma and actually design it live right so xd it's okay but i still feel figma is free right now so it's better that you uh, take as much advantage as figma so there were certain students like there was certain a friend of mine who were really struggling with adobe xd and even i myself was struggling with adobe xd while i was actually playing on with the tool figma i moved most of my friends to figma i was a sketch lover before like 3 years back i was a super super loyal sketch app lover but once figma came into picture i moved everything that i had on figma so yeah that's that's pretty much uh, for all those who are new hit that like button and uh, subscribe to my youtube channel i was really happy that i could help you guys out thanks for your questions and uh, yeah i think uh, i'm going to keep doing these live streams more often it's quite some time it's it's quite some time now it's 38 minutes into the stream if you guys have more last single question i would love to answer that and then let's end the stream over here don't forget do not forget to join the discord community it's it's really interesting and i keep posting a lot of things over here you will find live sessions news um, inspiration and uh, figma tips sketch app tips and things like that so do tune in on the discord community and try to get ui feedback also there are other designers who would love to give you feedback as well right so thanks everyone for tuning in i'm really happy that i could help you out over here if if you really think that i should keep making such live stream do comment once this video goes live on the youtube and do share it with your friends and all those people who are really you know in need of understanding what a ux and ui designer actually does so that's it from my end thank you so much uh, i'm also active on uh, instagram by the way so yeah i think you can uh, chat with me directly on instagram as well uh, that's my handle bhavin works you can definitely get in touch with me thank you so much bye bye see you in the next live stream bye bye